So what happened, folks? When did we go from dreaming about living in an age of advanced technology to living in a nightmare of advanced technology? We are attracted to and entertained by science fiction. But science truth always seems to be a bit stranger. Remember the TV show Star Trek? No, not the original, The Next Generation. Now, who wouldn't love to have access to such amenities as a teleporter, a holodeck, a food replicator, an android? But yet, the reality of all that is that there are real-life consequences for everything that we do as a civilization on this planet. Folks, they are rolling out this 5G technology. There is no stopping it. They're going forward with quantum computing. They're going forward with AI technology. And they will probably succeed because there are more than enough people that want it and are willing to pay for it, even with their health. So let's take a look at this new generation of mobile technology. The technology that will unite all smart electronic devices, great and small. The technology that many are so welcomely accepting into their lifestyles the coming of 5G. So we are moving into the fifth generation of mobile technology and communications, but unlike the four generations preceding it, this coming generation of tech is being met with great opposition. People are seeing this as a great threat. Why is that? As children, how cool was it to see someone on TV use a touchscreen? Now your TV is a touchscreen, soon to become a think screen this is what's coming imagine this you pick up your new $1,500 phone off its wireless charger the moment you pick it up the phone takes measurements of your pulse temperature moisture and the electromagnetic frequencies coming off of your hand it can then use that data to identify you and identify your mood when you look at the screen not only does that unlock the phone, but now you can use your face to control the phone, as the phone is collecting data on the movement of the eyes and facial muscles. The phone's AI gets to know you so well that it knows what you want to do before you do. And because people want to make their mobile device their main interface for everything, it will be what connects them to everything around them. Let me tell you where this is going. The cell phone is going to wake you up in the morning. You're going to walk into the kitchen and the cell phone is going to tell the coffee machine to make coffee. You go into the bathroom to shower and the cell phone tells the shower radio to switch on. It will adjust to the appropriate volume and tune to the appropriate station, depending on your mood. You get dressed, you grab your stuff, and as you walk out the door, your cell phone begins to tell you about the weather because it knows that you are leaving. In fact, the cell phone has already started your car for you. Now imagine going to work in an office, for example, with that same cell phone. And no matter where you are in the building, your boss can track you. They could access the closest monitor near you and live stream video and audio directly to you. They can see and hear you, and you can see and hear their head on a screen. Now, we already have the technology to do this. Easy. It is the 5G technology that is really going to make these kinds of things stranger than fiction. So what is 5G really? Well, first, it is not just one thing. It is a new world of technology that is being released. 
that operate at that higher level of connectivity and speed that really brings everything of its kind together. I'm telling you, generally speaking, the things that 5G is going to allow us to do is pretty incredible. Are there going to be problems with 5G? Oh, you bet there are. Believe it. But I want to show you how this is going to work so that you'll have a better understanding of what these problems will be and so that you'll be better able to take the appropriate steps to secure your health and your sanity. Now, in the first generation, and many of us who are not that old still remember, we used an analog system and communicated using analog signals. Once we made the switch to digital, all the technology associated with the analog system began to change. The second generation. This included the development of GSM, or Group Special Module, a global system for mobile communications, as well as the development of GPRS, General Packet Radio Service, and EDGE, Enhanced Data Rates for GSM Evolution, which is needed as new devices join in on the system. And these were the digital systems used for mobile voice communications in the second generation. And now that you have a system that is global, you now need to make it universal. That's where the third generation came in. Now you have enhanced GPRS and EDGE. You also have higher access speeds and increased data storage. But see, the thing is, there are a lot of people on this planet and every year, more people use this technology. People don't use their cell phones less every year, folks. They use them more. And what happens is, the portion of the frequency spectrum that we are all using gets overcrowded with usage and data. That increases dropped calls. Access becomes more and more restrictive. Interference increases. So what you have to do is, you have to open up new space in the higher frequency range of the spectrum in order to bring all these new devices in. Which means you also have to make the system faster. You have to increase the data storage and you have to put out more wattage. And you have to do it all without making it too expensive. So here we are today with the 4G or 4G LTE, meaning long-term evolution. And it's still not enough. You know, folks, it is us who have allowed these things to perpetuate in our lives. We have pushed this along, and now we want it to stop. We created Frankenstein's monster, and now we want it dead. But that's what humans do, right? And now with everything we are facing these days, this lineup of technology just seems to be like it's going to be more trouble than it's worth. I mean, anyone can go and read what people are saying, they don't want to be cooked by any more radiation than they already are. And I don't blame them. Because that is what this is going to do. There is no way around it. That is what radiation does. It affects things. Let me tell you how the signals are going to flow. So what they're going to use are MM waves. Millimeter waves. Okay? These waves fall into the frequency range between 30 and 300 gigahertz between microwaves and infrared waves. The problem with these waves is that they don't like to go through or around buildings, trees, things of that nature. So instead of having one big cell tower that transmits a signal in all directions to devices within range, you have many small cells, little base stations scattered everywhere. And the signals can now bounce around on these small cells giving you access at all angles, but you still need a massive MIMO, a maximum input, maximum output antenna, which is basically a bigger cell tower to get maximum input and output of power. Also, because of these small cells, every mobile device will now be individually locked onto, where every device is attached to this invisible tractor beam, this is called beamforming. This will keep live tracking of every device no matter where it is because you wouldn't want to lose your signal, right? But there is another problem with this system. 
You can only communicate in one direction at a time. So a full duplex has to be created so transmissions can go in both directions at the same time. Now here's the thing. Nobody wants to get cancer. Nobody wants their privacy invaded. And nobody wants to have their mind controlled. And if any new technology does any of the three, then there are going to be concerns, of course. In fact, with all things considered, the 4G we're on right now seems to be doing all those things. I love advancements in technology, but I love life more. It seems that we are headed to that Ready Player One lifestyle, where everyone is walking around with a headset on. No one ever says a word, no one ever presses a button or uses a tool. No one ever touches another human being. Walking around like a bunch of cyber junkies, fueling the system. 5G is something that really cannot be defined because many do not even know what all the technologies that make up the fifth generation are going to be. Any company in telecommunications, they each have their own role to play and they each have their own technologies to develop and contribute to this new generation, which many expect to see people connected to globally by 2020. The developing AI systems some of these companies are working on need this 5G network because these computers need access to everything within seconds. Understand that they want everyone connected at all times. Now many adults will be resistant to these changes, but guess what? These children today will not be, because these are the things they are growing up with. And I don't think they are going to appreciate anyone trying to stop them. Pray, folks, that we never make it to where children decide that they are going to turn in their own parents into the authorities for showing resistance into their new 1984 transhumanistic mark of the beast society. I know it sounds crazy, but you have to admit, it's not too far-fetched. The immediate real issue with all this is the effects of the EMFs going to and from the new 5G compatible devices everyone is going to have to get. Now again, 5G doesn't really mean anything. You have to be more specific. In this case, I'm talking about the small cells, the beam forming. How is that going to affect the body? Because these are higher frequencies being directed at you with more power. And with all the people, all the mobile devices, and all these separate cells, there are going to be signals bouncing all over the place. I mean, saturated beyond belief. Unfortunately, this is one more thing we're all going to have to face in the coming years. And it's really going to come down to careful maneuvering to get around all this stuff. There really is no escape unless you can leave your city. These EMF protection devices, there are many types, so you really need to know who manufactures the product, how it's made, and why it works. Do some experimenting. I mean, you can use your cell phone as an EMF detector. Technology is cool, but I think it's really time we stop to think about how unhealthy it is to just keep immersing ourselves deeper into some type of artificial construct that we think we can perfect. And instead of coexisting with nature, we try to coexist with machines. Yes, they're going to try to pass this stuff off as safe. The cell phones we have now aren't safe and never have been. We knew how unsafe cell phones were before they came out. That's why nobody had them before. And now look at what we've done. Well, hopefully soon mankind will awaken and reclaim what it means to be human instead of just a ghost in the shell.
uh, a major Japanese mobile carrier, NTT, has developed a base station for 5G technology that is buried in the ground to overcome a shortage of space. The waterproof antenna is placed into a 70 centimeter deep hole and then covered with reinforced plastic that still allows the radio waves to pass through. And they tell us that in accordance with guidelines set by communications ministry, the intensity and direction of the radio waves will be adjusted to prevent them from affecting passer buyers. So I'm going to stop right now and just add this. They're saying protect passer buyers. This will be adjusted when they're telling us we want 5G. We want to stream faster downloads. And yet they're telling us that this will be directed so it will protect passer buyers. Now I continue. They tell us the new 5G wireless systems require more base stations than before, but the amount of available space on towers and building roofs is becoming increasingly limited. NTT uh, Docomo plans to start putting the new base station into practical use in March of 2019. The company's manager in charge of wireless access network says they come came up with the idea of burying the base station while thinking of ways to overcome the space shortages. And he says that his company hopes that this technology will allow more people to enjoy stable wireless reception. Now we know that this is all bioelectromagnetic weapon systems being fully deployed. A weapon system that operates at the speed of light, that can kill and torture and does, and enslave and there's no escape. There's nowhere where we'll be able to live, nowhere where we can hide, no safe place. I would recommend that 